I think it's fair to say that season one of The Witcher didn't exactly set the world on fire when it premiered back in 2019. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it was a show that I could best describe as a diamond in the rough. A compelling main character with an intriguing premise, let down by haphazard world building, a confused and convoluted narrative, and an unnecessary focus on side characters that left the protagonist feeling like an afterthought in his own show. All the right ingredients were definitely there, but they didn't quite gel together into a satisfying end product. Products. But what the hell, it was good enough for me to give it a second chance with season 2. After all, plenty of shows get off to a rocky start before finding their feet and going on to better things, and maybe that would be the case with The Witcher. So now that season 2 has been and gone, has it actually learned its lesson? Well, the short answer is yes and no. It's definitely corrected some of the narrative problems that were so off-putting in season 1, and there's clearly been an attempt to frame the story in a wider context, bringing in some of the all-important world-building that was so lacking before, but there's still some persistent problems. Fuck. And in order to understand the good and bad about this show, allow me to illuminate you. So the action picks up right after the climactic battle at the end of season 1. With the battle all but lost, the sorceress Yennefer used forbidden fire magic to destroy the invading Nilfgaardian army, apparently vaporising herself in the process. But then the story's like, nah, it'll be fine, and she wakes up in the forest the next morning. We've all been there, lass. Unfortunately, she partied a bit too hard the night before, and now she's lost her magic ability. But before she can figure out what the fuck just happened to her, she gets captured by diverse female sorceress, who then gets captured by strong female elf leader. Damn, people just can't stop getting captured in this fucking show. Then the three strong female characters go into an underground tunnel and have a vision of what they want most in life. <laughs> No, not that. This vision leads to an alliance between diverse female sorceress and strong female elf leader, while Yennefer learns that if she wants to get her magic back, she has to track down Ciri and deliver her to an evil witch that got banished to a magical cabin on legs. Uh... The evil witch wants to possess Ciri so she can open a portal back to her own dimension and use it to summon the wild hunt to fuck things up for everyone. Speaking of which, Ciri's finally been united with Geralt, who takes her to the witcher stronghold at Kaer Morant so he can learn more about her. And before you know it, she's training to become a witcher by playing Total Wipeout and experiencing a series of spectacular fails. Seriously, how can you fuck up something as simple as this? The more Geralt learns about Ciri, the more he realises how important she really is. Not only does she have the power of chaos magic inside her, which would make her a powerful sorceress in her own right, but she also has elder blood running through her veins, which is a key component needed to produce more witchers. This unique combination of magical bullshit gives her the ability to tear open the fabric of time and space space, allowing her to travel to different worlds and allowing creatures to cross over into theirs. The upshot here is that Ciri literally has the power to reshape or even destroy the entire world, and because of that she's now got a giant target on her back. The Nilf Guardians, the strong female elf leader, the diverse female sorceress, Yennefer, Vesemir, the evil witch, and fucking Dog the Bounty Hunter all want her for various reasons. To borrow a phrase from Nerdrotic, she's literally the girl who's the key to everything. Which conveniently enough brings me along to one of my first criticisms. Season 1 very much felt like Yennefer's story rather than Geralt's, which is kind of weird in a show that's literally called The Witcher, but whatever. I rightly assumed that season 2 would focus more on Geralt and Ciri now that they were finally together, and well, I was half right. Make no mistake, this season is very much Ciri's story. I mean, what they actually do with her isn't terrible, and it's nice to see the character given some room to breathe and grow, instead of being a walking MacGuffin that everyone's fighting over like last season. She actually has to struggle and fail to learn new skills, she has to train hard and earn respect, and she even has some reverence for her elders, instead of coming across like a smug insufferable twat who already knows everything. Freya Allen seems to have aged about five years between seasons, which is no bad thing, because Ciri needed to have more presence and self-confidence now, and thank fuck the makeup department finally saw fit to give her eyebrows. Now, to be fair, Geralt is still around and it's nice to see him do some actual monster hunting again, but for the most part he's not really central to the narrative. He's more of a framing device, used to get important information across to the audience and support other characters with whatever they need to do. We're still given almost no insight into his personal history, his perspective on things, or even his overall goals and motivations. He just really wants to protect Ciri because 
uh, reasons. And it's a shame, really, because Henry Cavill is without doubt the best thing in this fucking show. He's cool, he's physically imposing, he's great in the fight scenes, and he's got real charisma and screen presence. Which makes it weird and frustrating that the writers seem determined to have him play second fiddle to Siri and Yennefer. Speaking of Yennefer, the script gives her an excessive amount of screen time for what she actually accomplishes this season. A lot of what she does in the first half amounts to pointless busy work designed to eat up screen time and keep her in a holding pattern until it's time to reunite with Geralt and Ciri. I mean, I like the idea of her struggling to survive in a hostile world without the magic power she's come to rely on, but I feel like the show never really commits to this. It would have been interesting to see her really go through the mill, broken down and humiliated like when we first met her, but for the most part she's able to bluff and bullshit her way through pretty much any situation. She's always got another trick up her sleeve, another scathing put down, another little ploy to keep her opponents off balance. I guess my point here is that it might have been good to see her fall just a little further to make her rise seem all the more impactful, but whatever. The scriptwriters definitely seem to like her, and I know this because the first three episodes basically consist of every single character in the show endlessly harping on about how super awesome and brave and epic she was, and how the world is going to be a cold and lonely place without her. You know, there really is such a thing as show, don't tell. Just saying. The other downside to her little escape and evasion subplot is that it brings her back into contact with Yaskier, who is, without fucking question, the worst thing in this entire show. Hugging. We are hugging. Fuck. He's still an insufferable, ridiculous prick who almost gets his friends killed on multiple occasions through sheer fucking stupidity. His actor still plays him like he flounced in off the street and decided to roll with it, and he doesn't just chew up the scenery, he takes off and nukes the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Also, I can't shake the feeling that he acts like some kind of proxy for the writers. Like when a character makes a meta reference to how convoluted and confusing the first season was, and Yaskier spends the next five minutes berating him for being too boneheaded to understand its genius. Yeah, we see what you're doing there and it's not particularly funny. You made your show too fucking complicated and nobody understood what the fuck was happening. Deal with it. On the technical side of things, there is a slight improvement over season one. The CGI's better and more convincing, there's decent establishing shots to give you a better sense of where you are, and the cinematography is generally pretty solid. I just wish the colour palette was as diverse as the casting though. I just can't decide which area was my favourite. The Grey Castle, the Brown Castle, the Grey Village, the Grey Mountaintop, the Brownish Grey Forest, or the other Grey Castle. Game of Thrones, whatever its faults, was smart enough to give each location a distinct look and feel so that you always knew where the action was happening. One look at the lighting, the architecture and the costumes was usually enough to tell you whether you were in Winterfell, King's Landing, the Iron Islands, Dorne or Essos. This was pretty important because it helped to build a picture of a complex, living, believable world with well-defined cultures and nations. But The Witcher is mostly just a generic mass of people and places all haphazardly thrown in together with no sense of structure or geography, and the show's insistence on having people from wildly different ethnicities all mixed in together doesn't exactly help the audience develop a strong sense of location. The end result of all this is a show that's slowly pulling itself out of the mire and finding its own voice. It's definitely improving, the characters are growing on me, and the world of The Witcher feels a little bigger and more fleshed out than it did before. The problem is that I'm not sure it's really happening fast enough to get people on board and build the momentum it needs to break through into mainstream success. What this show really needed was an epic, triumphant second season that hit the ground running and didn't let up until the explosive finale. Instead, it kind of stumbled out of the gate, cautious and uncertain, taking its time to build momentum and only really hitting its stride in the last couple of episodes. I really hope it's enough to keep things going, because I think there's a great show buried underneath all the flaws and problems. Netflix just needs to find a way to get to it. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.